Welcome to JavaScript tutorial number 7, Arrays. In this video, we'll be learning how we can store multiple values in one variable. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. So what is an array? Arrays are a special type of variable that can hold multiple values under the same name. This has many benefits, but the biggest is the ability to loop over each of the values inside an array. Originally, if we wanted to store three numbers like 4, 8 and 16, we needed to create three separate variables. Using an array, however, we can store all three inside the one variable. We can then access each of the values inside the array we created by using square brackets on the end of our variable with the index inside. The index is a whole number starting from zero. So if we wanted to alert out the first value inside of our array, we would type my array open square brackets, zero, close square brackets, and that would grab the first value that was stored inside the array. If we wanted the second value, we'd place a one inside the square brackets. We briefly saw how to create an array on the first slide. There are a few ways of creating arrays in JavaScript, but we're gonna focus on the two main ways. The safest and most straightforward way of creating an array is to assign a variable with each of the values between square brackets, each separated by a comma. In the example here, we create a new array called myArray with two values, value1 and value2. On the second line, we create an empty array and overwrite the values inside myArray. The second way is to use JavaScript's new keyword to create a new object of array. We'll look more at objects in the next video. I suggest trying to only use the first method in your code as it is more clear and concise. Though when reading code written by others, you may see the new keyword used with an array. So I want you to be aware that it does the same thing. Okay, now for the powerful part. Arrays go hand in hand with for loops. For loops are designed to loop for a specific number of times, and they even hold a value while looping. This makes it brilliant for looping through each index of an array. In the example here, we have a for loop that counts from zero to the length of the array called my array. The length is a special value, also called a property, of every array, which keeps the total number of values inside the array. Each time the loop is run, the element i in the array will be added onto the end of the text string. Alright, enough talking, let's give it a shot. Let's make a script that creates an array of numbers, then we'll loop through and calculate the average. Let's call it array.html. Alright, so let's come over and let's use our hello.html as a template. And first thing we want to do is create our array. So inside of our script tags, we're going to go a var and we'll call it be consistent my array. And it's going to equal open square brackets. And let's have the set of numbers. Let's do powers of two. So two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. All right, and then we'll put a semicolon on the end. Now we've got our array defined and it has uh, its uh, eight elements. Now let's create another variable, which is gonna be our sum, which we're gonna be, we're gonna use to get the average. So var sum zero. And now we're gonna perform a for loop. So we'll do for, I'll open up our parentheses, do var i for our index. The zero i is less than my array so we're going to grab our array and we're going to get the dot length now this is with a lowercase l and it is case sensitive so we need to make sure it's a lowercase l for length colon i plus plus so we're going to iterate all the way from zero up to my array length and we don't want to actually reach the total number because we're starting from zero, not one. So we're just going up until we hit the length. All right, so close off our parentheses and we'll open up our curly braces. Inside our four, all we're going to do is our sum plus equals my array, open square brackets, and we're going to put in our i, which will start off at zero, and then it'll go up to one, two, three, four, etc., and pull out each of the numbers inside of our array. And put a semicolon on the end of that. 
So now that we've got our sum after that for loop completes, what we're going to do is in our in our HTML of our output, our usual output, we'll get rid of this line here. And we're going to make that equal to the sum divided by my array dot length. And once again, lowercase l. So that will divide the total sum of all of the numbers and will provide us with the average number. All right, cool. So we'll say control S and save that. Oh, should have renamed it. I'll save that as, I'm going to call it array.html. All right, so let's give it a shot. Come over and we'll drag our array.html into our web browser and we get 63.75, which if we look at is around about here. And we've got much larger numbers up here to the smaller numbers here, so the average does sit around about here. Cool. Now that we can create arrays, it is useful to be able to add new data into an array. There are several ways we can do this. Simply, we can just specify the next element in the array and set a value to it. For example, here I have an array that currently has four elements, and I want to add a fifth one onto the end. So inside the square brackets, I put a four, because we start counting from zero, then set a new value. In this case, it's the string new element. Another way of adding a single value onto the end is with the push method, a function that belongs to every array variable. So we can type myArray.push and then in the brackets, a new element, which will push a new element onto the end of the array. Finally, we can join another whole array onto the end of our array using the concat method. Concat stands for concatenation and adds another array onto the end of the current array. We just saw two useful methods that belong to every array. It turns out there is a bunch of useful methods that perform certain tasks on your array. A really useful one is dot sort. This will sort the array in alphabetical order. This doesn't quite work for numbers because by default the sort function will turn everything into strings to sort it. In a later video on callbacks, We'll look at how we can sort numbers in JavaScript. Another useful method is dot splice. This can be confusing, but is very useful if you want to remove, insert, or insert and remove into the middle of an array. The parameters it takes is the index to start splicing from, the number of items you wish to delete from that point, which can be zero, and then new items to add in. There are quite a few methods that we can use with arrays. I'll put a link in the description. Okay, let's make a script that takes names from the user and adds them to an array, sorts them alphabetically, and then outputs the list to the screen, the perfect tool for organizing your party list. So on that note, let's call it partylist.html. We'll use the add.html template once again to save time. So we'll open up our add.html with our text editor. And inside our my function, we're going to actually rename our my function this time and call it something different. So let's call it uh, update list. Because instead of uh, reloading the page every time we want to use this, we're going to update the current page over and over again. And because we want to keep our list of people over the, over the um, JavaScript being loaded, we're going to create our variable as a global. So var people. And that's just going to equal an empty array to start with. So we're not going to have anything inside the square brackets. So it's just a plain brand new array with nothing in it. And it's called people. All right, so inside of our update list, we're going to have our first var, which we're going to call it our name, which is we're going to get from our document. And down the bottom here in our actual HTML, we can get rid of our one of our input fields. We're going to need one and we're going to call it name. It's going to be the name of the person we're entering. Let's type text and let's call the ID full name. So it's the full name of the person. So we'll copy that and we'll paste that into the element that we're getting by ID and we're grabbing the value out. So the name that we want to enter and we can remove this second line because we don't need a second number or anything like that. And now we're going to add that person to our list. So people, which is our array. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to add that name to our people array. So people dot push. And we're going to push on the name that is entered. And then we're going to sort our array. So we're going to people dot sort. And that'll sort it alphabetically. And we'll actually grab our document get element by ID here and we'll set that to an empty set of strings because we want to clear out any previous output that has been made. And then for our var, oop, our var i equals zero, i is less than our people, oop, people dot length. We're going to increment i. And inside of our for loop, we're going to output our names. So our, we'll copy our document get element by id output. And we're going to, instead of just equals, we're going to plus equals. So we're going to add on to the end of what's currently been outputted. We're going to add on people dot, whoop, people, sorry, open square brackets i plus open quotes, and we're going to do a line break with a self-closing slash. So that will place each of the names in alphabetical order as we go through the list and put them each on a new separate line. Cool, so that's our update list function done. Now we need to come down to our button on click. And currently we've got an unclick, and this is my function. We want to change that to our update list. And we'll call it, instead of equals, we'll call it insert. And for some little flourish above our output, we'll do uh, h3 of uh, names. And close off our h3. And then we'll add a horizontal rule, so hr and self-closing tag. All right, let's save that uh, as our party list, so save as party list html. Let's drag it into our web browser and we get our names list. So we can start adding in some names. So let's do Fred Flint insert. We got our Fred Flint. Now we can come along and we can add something like uh, Ted uh, Ted Waters inside that and it's been alphabetized already because the F becomes 4T. You add something like Alex uh, William insert that and it comes up the top and we start to build out this list of names um, which is pretty useful. Awesome, so we've successfully used a array to store a bunch of names and added to it from the one document without having to refresh the page. Cool. This concludes our look at arrays in JavaScript. Next, we'll be looking at using objects to store data together with other related data. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.